give my bid on a video that I saw tonight, um, and Happy Halloween, everybody, again, uh, on PAE and 132 limitations to 4 gigs. Um, and because I wanted to give the information out as that video uh, was, was, was in the technical realm, and there was a lot of incorrect information because there was a lot of incorrect premises and, and joining things that actually have nothing to do with each other. One, physical address extension is not the reason why OS 10 sees 4 gigs of RAM. That's just a separate issue going back to uh, the EFI loaders to uh, however far back you want to go with OS 10 and partial 64-bit going up to uh, from basically from the OS loaders having everything available in terms of a flat memory model to model for everything being addressable um, and then there's PAE which is actually designed to take 32-bit systems to see more than 4 gigs that's the purpose of it see more than 4 gigs so you have those two have nothing to do with each other and why OS 10 is seeing basically 4 gigs of RAM okay so we have established that OS 10 is seeing 4 gigs of RAM. It, 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 there's also uh, different types of uh, memory extensions, physical memory extensions within uh, RISC architecture and AMD. It's not just uh, uh, to Intel's world. Anyway, um, that said, Win32 Win uh, basically servers can see uh, up to 4 gigs of RAM and actually have PAE to get more than 4 gigs of RAM while if the, the, the legacy loaders will still map a certain section of memory uh, basically for your um, IO devices, your map memory IO, okay? So that is an independent process of Windows. It's not necessarily Windows. It's just what it's writing on that s takes that and says, I'm using this, and Windows says, oh, well, I only have this much left. So it's, it's not necessarily a waste of... of you're not wasting your time or, or, or money on it. You, there is a waste uh, of part of it, um, but it's not a 100% waste of money to be technically accurate. So there, and also you, it's it's not that you're not using everything either. But the the memory is being used. You are feeding the CPUs. Is it's at, we're talking about the software level, all right? So it's not like I said, it's not a complete waste. And also, if we're going to bring in what Dell talks about. There, the OEMs have the power to say the mapped memory for I/O devices is going to be X amount, so they can optimize you know certain portions and they can compete over however much they're going to. So that does exist as well because they they have the power to do that within firmware. Now, um, that said, Windows 32 in terms of performance, seeing four gig, the amount of memory you see has nothing to do with how real really how fast you are unless the addressable space starts to have to get swapped for the amount of, for the amount of kernel space and user space activity that that is beginning to exceed therefore swaps have to occur so let's say you've already made it past the threshold of 2.5 gigs for your for your uh, operating system while wow. and this is completely an arbitrary number because there are many it, it all depends on your your hardware going on up on how much is going to be mapped and all this other stuff regarding Windows 3.2. All right, so that said, um, you're not going to have a performance issue. It's a complete misinformation to say, oh, you have these gaming rigs, you put 4 gigs in it. No, it's fine. You can stick with 4 gigs. Um, in your, in, in many times, even like with when, when I put 4 gigs and I, I get a performance gain, it's not as much, I mean, it's not as much as, as you would say if it were physical one-to-one. -one. But no operating system at a 32 level is going to give you the performance of one-to-one. -one. All of it is swapping because you still have a 32-bit bottleneck. It's, it's, if you're going to talk about speed performance, you're not going to get speed performance even out of PAE. The whole design of that is to see more memory is not necessarily give you more performance. It's to help applications that actually need that much size and memory get it. That's not a, a necessarily performance gain. It could be considered a task gain in terms of how much multitasking you do. Multitasking, though, can be argued, well, is that really a performance thing? To, to me, as in terms of my videos of multiprocessing, parallel processing in concurrency with RAM is performance. 
because that gives you the fastest speed. It's not a ma it's it's it, it's an argument of how fast I can go to worth worth how much how much I can do. Okay, so it's complete misinformation to say all these things and try to lump them together. PAE versus Win32 limitation versus the reasons why OS10 can see um, four gigs of RAM. They're all separate. Then then you can even get into let's say with gaming rigs versus the Mac Pro. The, basically, now iMacs will use unregistered RAM, but this is registered RAM. This takes a performance hit in terms of memory cycles versus my gaming rig. This is buffered. You typically don't really want to game on a Mac Pro. You can, I mean, it's not just, but your clock cycles from the memory, and when you get into hardcore overclocking, like, like myself with games, is not going to suffice no matter what. It's at a hardware level, there, it's, not, it's not equal. I mean, that is a a design limitation that there is nothing around. Buffered memory takes a performance hit versus unbuffered memory, okay? There are reasons why we use buffered memory and unbuffered memory, okay? That's a separate video. And by the way, um, anybody who wants detailed stuff about this with all the fancy graphics, I'll be more than happy to do that, okay? So, to recap, Win32 has its loader issues, which stems really from... from we can call legacy loaders or BIOS for the firmware that goes up because all of that is really uh, x86 real time, which is very low bit level programming going on up through adapters to get up to finally your 32 or whatever. So um, versus let's the the open firmwares that can support um, higher bit structures and EFI, which can support even 64 bit structure and how they handle things. Um, for instance, um, EFI does not have uh, ROM limitations. It is a flat memory model, and so everything, all memory is available to it. There's, there's no, there's no these blocks that exist. Now we can, we can argue this in EFI versus other stuff um, can be argued, but Windows Vista uses EFI. The reason why Windows 32 uses BIOS is for legacy support. They would, they would, and this is the philosophical debate that needs to be brought up on, about Microsoft. It's greatest strength of saying. I want to support all of my users, you know, like going back X amount of years in, in just about everybody's hardware, although I want to exclude the massive amount of hardware support, okay? I want to say this is it's because when it comes to drivers, they're saying, well, I want to, you know, support all these guys back X amount of years. That is their philosophical model. And so they go, so all of that can't be signed into EFI. There's, there's, you, you have driver registry issue problems, so on and so forth, things can't be handed off. So they, they keep these things here. And I hope Microsoft's goal is to virtualize all of that in the future, and that would be its own independent process, Out and, and they'd be able to get away from this, this, this legacy loader shit. So, but that's not to say that, oh, Windows can't do it. When you have a mapped memory block, even OS X, if it were to run on that loader, wouldn't be able to do shit with it. So, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> It, the, the, now deciding on what you load on, that's that's your that's there. But to say that oh this is limited, then this is limited. Look, if you have a 32-bit structure byte, and you use you you use basically your your indexing swapping of tables, which if you want to get the technicals, I'm just being very you know simp as simplistic as possible. You still have to swap stuff out. Stuff has, still has to be virtualized and everything. No operating system escapes that, guys. None. So, if you want to argue, oh, well, this handles it over here and it's independent from the operating system and that all sucks, that's fine. Um, but when it comes to performance, same thing when I argue in my multi-core systems versus the whole thing. Seeing more memory doesn't necessarily mean your whole system is going to go faster, okay? You can put 32 gigs, like they say, you know, your 32 gigs of RAM and all this other stuff doesn't mean it's going to go faster. It's going to help those threaded applications that need that much addressable space use it. That's it. Because your bit structure, on um, what it has addressable to it, that has its limitation. Everything else has to be swapped and indexed cross, let's, let's just, it's cross-referenced, okay? So, and, and we're not even discussing 64 bits. So, outside of 64 bit, we're just keeping in a 32 bit world. That is a world you are stuck with. If, you have, if you're a gamer or a Win32 user, this whole PAE thing and all that, you're not going to get a performance in on that. There are other reasons why Windows, uh, why I, I also advocate OS X over Windows. But what was presented in that video 
it had all these different things and it's it's just not coherent and they're two separate things each one should have been argued separately they're all different they're all different reasons so on and so forth the other thing I wanted to get on was this whole thing for a dollar like in wasting money for a memory module or whatever there's waste in all types of computing whether it's Apple or anybody else from from multi-core system from like going to quad core to eight core in terms of a 40% gain being a 60% loss meaning you've wasted money on that 60% to fragmentation uh, uh, or, or fragment reads of uh, hard drives and so on and so forth. There's waste everywhere. Anyway, thanks for watching.